Hello, welcome to City Planner Plays. In this tutorial, I want to discuss a couple of issues that new players routinely see in the game, and that is not having enough workers, not having enough educated workers, and not having enough customers. Now, if you started out in the game and you've built what you think is the perfect city, but it's just not taking off and you're seeing these issues, there's probably a couple reasons why. So even if you followed proper roadway hierarchy, even if you've made a walkable city, you can run into this problem. And it's probably a mixture of a lack of residential zoning and a problem in your educational pipeline. Let's take a look at this downtown area that I have created. So I have placed all the commercial uses along this main corridor, industrial off to the side, and a whole bunch of residential all in one swath. And when we take a look, you'll see that the downtown area, which has predominantly uh, office and uh, commercial uses, is really suffering. So we have right here, not enough educated workers. Over here, not enough workers. So this is a fairly easy thing to fix. So what happens, uh, well, first of all, this is an education issue. Uh, so we have an education pipeline that you need to maintain in the city. And that pipeline starts at elementary schools, works its way up to high schools, and ends at the university, and is supported by public libraries. So what you'll notice is that I've built no libraries and no universities. Now you could build a library that's not going to necessarily solve your problems, but it's good to support, to, to have to support your uh, educational system. So I'll, I'll, I'll place one of these along the main drag. Uh, but the real thing that we're missing here is a university. So I'm going to place this university in kind of a central location in my community. And you'll notice that within short order, things begin to resolve themselves. First of all, our capacity shoots through the roof and now all of our elig eligible citizens are gonna start using that university. So let's do a quick time lapse and uh, see what happens in our downtown area. Okay, we've made some progress, but one of the things that adding the university did was actually make our utility demands much uh, much more dire. So now we, uh, we've experienced a great deal of population growth. So what we're gonna do is take care of those needs and that should really help our city continue growing. So we need water and sewage capacity. So I'm gonna add a bit now. And our garbage processing status is also not in a great place. Let's fix that as well. Okay, so at this point, I think we're in a much better spot. And if we get back to looking at this area, I would venture to say that this issue resolves itself. And our population is still continuing to grow and I'm noticing one more issue and that is death care. So we're gonna add a couple of crematoriums. I think that'll speed this along as well. Okay, so I started this video 20 minutes ago and I now have a downtown that is vibrant. It has a lot of activity and there are no educational demands that aren't being met in terms of employees. All of the businesses have enough employees and educated employees. And this all came down to adding one key building and that's a university because that was what was missing in my educational pipeline. And you can see it's not just that side of the downtown area, it's also this side. We are completely good in both sides of the downtown and our community is thriving. Our demand is up. And if you look, our budget's actually stabilized. And the main reason for that is now all of this residential area was able to fill in now that we have our uh, educational system in check. So it's really important when you're playing the game that 
you make sure that all these systems are working. Oh, and that you don't do this. <laughs> Never zone in a roundabout. That was the only one. Anyway, um, and making sure that uh, you're meeting all of your educational needs will ensure that you're able to level up all of your buildings. So one of the things that I think we're, we're able to do now is just take a look around. When we look at our houses, we're at least beyond level one in most of them. And, and, and most of them are, are, looks like level three or better. So that is a huge benefit. And when you look at the, the people who live there, we have educated workers and well-educated workers. And some, there's still a lot of uneducated workers. And we might want to take a look at our pipeline and make sure it's stabilized. Right now, it looks like from an elementary school standpoint, we're great, but we don't have enough high school capacity. So there's probably some good merit to adding uh, at least two, maybe three more high schools to stabilize the school system here. So you might wonder, why did I have to wait so long to get this to be vibrant? Well, all of those people had to make their way through the educational system. And that takes time, <laughs> just like it does in reality. Uh, you can't become a university town overnight. You've got to uh, wait for people who wait for children to become teenagers that are educated and teenagers that are educated to go to the university and those university students to graduate before you have the workers you need for these businesses. So the other thing I like to check is policies. You know, you can always have the education boost policy, making sure that everyone's going to school and make sure that you don't have policies like uh, there's a policy that will actually prioritize uh, working over going to school. So school's out. That's a policy that you should really only target to a district unless you want a really blue collar city and you aren't going to plan on having a, a big commercial district or uh, office district. This is the kind of thing you want to really be uh, aware of. So that's how you solve not enough workers and not enough educated workers. But what about not enough customers? We'll deal with that next. Okay, and for our next issue, we're going to take a look at another common problem, and that is not enough customers. And this one is uh, incredibly frustrating if you get it, because it can it can really seem to be insurmountable. But I'm here to tell you that's actually a, a pretty easy thing to remedy. So in this area, I've built directly across from the river. I've continued the grid on the opposite side of the river, but I've done a couple of things that are causing some problems. So first of all, look at the zoning. There's no residential near this zone. And let's look at our transportation network. There's only one way to get across the river. So this is a big cul-de-sac. So that's, you know, Personally, I think that's a terrible idea in terms of being able to serve it with a variety of city services. That makes it a real challenge. Uh, another thing that I've done to create an issue here is I've taken this uh, two-lane uh, boulevard and rather than extending it across the water, I've added a highway. Now, some people will do this thinking, you know, I need to get people across the river quickly. Well, that's not necessarily the best option because now pedestrians can't walk across. So everyone here is forced to get here with a car and why would you ever come over here? There's just no purpose. Uh, it's not the, not, not, not the most happening place to be. You could probably uh, meet most of your needs across the river and that's what the Sims will do. There's, there's no reason to, 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 to come across, so why would you? So I am experiencing a couple of oddities here, so we're gonna just make a couple of changes and that should give us a very clean connection across here. I'm going to use move it, clean up this power line. Probably going to lose all power over here momentarily. So this change will make a significant difference in and of itself. But there's probably two, uh, two places you want to look at. Number one is your transportation network. And number two is your mix of land uses. And like I mentioned, this is one land use. Now at least there's a way to, to operate over here as a pedestrian. You could walk across this bridge. So that's helpful, but it's likely not good enough. If you really want to remedy this, you're going to need a better mix of land uses. 
And truthfully, a lot of times when you see this, it's really an overzoning of commercial land uses. So you might just need to catch up with your residential. And you can see here, there's absolutely no demand for commercial zones, but a medium demand for residential. And that's all related to uh, the, the zoning decisions that I've made here. So let's add a bridge across and make a small residential neighborhood. I have a feeling that that's going to fix things for us. Okay, so now I have everything set up except for the utilities. So I'll get water in here and then I will add some residential land uses. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this area is going to blossom and we're going to remedy all of our problems across the water. So I'm gonna be pretty, uh, not, not very conservative with my zoning. I'm just gonna go about it, zone the whole kit and caboodle. Residential dense residential and we'll see what happens. So the other thing that could be done and that we might want to be thinking about would be extending transit to this new area and connecting it up to existing high density residential areas. Uh, so that might be another approach that we want to take right now. So why don't we make our first subway line, or rather, our first underground metro station. Okay, so I probably shouldn't have flooded this entire area out for that subway line. However, I think that once we rebound, we're gonna be in a good spot. Okay, so I did go ahead and get everything fixed up and you see that our issues are cropping up again, but one of the things we didn't do yet was actually build our subway line. So let's do that right now. This will do. So now we have this subway line and eventually we're gonna see lots and lots of traffic. I do, while we're waiting for that to come online, I want to take a look at these junctions. This would not be warranted, all of these stoplights, and they are going to slow down traffic to this area and make it difficult for people to get here and do their business. And what you'll notice is this entire residential area that we just built is already filled in. And we still are just now getting our commercial demand back. We have more demand for residential, in fact. So one thing you could do is look to build more residential in this area. Now I have a sneaking suspicion that if I were to take some of these districts here and repurpose them, they're going to spring to life really quickly and they're gonna fix the rest of our commercial uses. In fact, you see commercial uses wanting to spring up in the middle of these right off the bat. And that's not at all surprising. So I took mostly land that was undeveloped in an effort to to fix this so now one thing that I'm noticing is that all of those all of that uh, not enough customers uh, all of those indic indicators are gone from this area there's a couple over here and one thing you'll notice in this area is no residential so I guarantee if we were to make a little residential node over here So we'll take away a total of eight, uh, four eight by eight squares and fill that in. I am noticing that we have some flooding over here, so I'm gonna take care of that. So getting this little bit of residential in here <laughs> and that subway line is all that we needed to, to tamp down some of those issues that we were seeing over here. So. It's really as simple as, as making sure that your land uses are integrated well with one another and that your transportation network can, can facilitate the, the, the transport of customers to the commercial districts that you're putting together. So it's not 
anything more complicated than that, you've probably overzoned your commercial. You probably don't have enough uh, transportation connections to the area and your land uses are likely not integrated well enough. Let's look at the subway station. Uh, we're not able to see just yet, but we click in here, we can see there's a monster queue of people waiting to get to their destination. We can also see that there are a lot of people taking this line, which is not a very complicated line, to, 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 to tell you the truth. 284 people, these are customers for these businesses. So it's working out really well. And I have a feeling that if we take a look at our transportation networks and we look just at our at our pedestrian network, there's a lot of pedestrian activity in this area now. Uh, it's coming from this residential district over here. It's coming from that subway station. You can see that people are using it well. And we can see that there are people coming over here. So just in general, uh, there's a lot more pedestrian activity, a lot more, uh, a lot more activity in general, and we could even up the ante here and add in connections to our bike network, which would make things even better. But you can see that the uh, the upgrade of this uh, bridge has, has done a lot, and you have a lot of trips coming from the northern part of the city into this area, and as a result, no more indicators showing that there is not enough customers. So that is how I would approach that issue. Uh, if you like this video and you wanna see more tutorials like this, please consider hitting that like button. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. And if you wanna be notified when I make new videos, just like this one, please hit that notification bell. I wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your support enables me to make uh, interesting content like this. Uh, their names are listed here. And even though this is a tutorial, I will give you a brief city tour to show you this little city that we've developed for the tutorial. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.